What's going on, nation? I'm Scott from MuscularStrength.com, and we are back with the Dumbest Mistake series. Now, if you're not caught up on these videos, I will link to the entire playlist during the end screen. But today, we're talking hammer curls. Man, if I could just pick one biceps exercise most people not only have bad form with, but use incorrectly in correlation to building big biceps, it would be this one. But before we get started with all that, guys, my full body program will be here very soon. And if you want to make sure you don't miss it, you've got to click that bell. Subscribing is step one, but that bell is the only way YouTube will acknowledge your existence as a real person who wants to make gains. All right, guys, mistake number one, and probably the most common mistake, is thinking that the hammer curl is a biceps focused movement. Now, obviously, we're flexing the elbow joint, which means the biceps are involved, but the hammer curl mainly targets the brachialis and the brachioradialis. But don't think you're wasting your time. Developing these two muscles is very important to have thick and muscle-bound arms. In fact, if the brachialis is developed properly, it can have an effect where it helps your biceps look even bigger because that muscle sits right in the middle of your upper arm. So now that you know this, just make sure when you're training your arms, you don't replace a biceps-focused movement with hammer curls. You want to do both. Now, the second most common mistake people make ties in really well with the first one, and it's not earning your reps. This includes both full range of motion and controlled negatives. I see dudes all the time in the gym swinging 70s or 80 pound dumbbells with no control whatsoever. Guys, zero mind muscle connection will result in your inability to flex, squeeze, rip, and tear your muscles for growth. Period. Now proper form includes a fully flexed tricep at the bottom of the movement, keeping your elbows in front of your hips as you curl up, and then flexing your biceps as high as you can at the very top of the movement. Remember, we're not strength training here. We are building muscle. So yes, we do need to overload, but overloading with weight you can't control is a recipe for little to zero muscle growth and a possible injury. What you want to do is utilize mind-muscle connection and really work the muscle you're targeting. So to do that, you have to come up, really flex your arms, forcing as much blood as possible into the area, and then control the negative. Every rep counts and every rep should be aimed towards maximum muscle breakdown. Mistake number three, curling both arms at the same time. <laughs> All right, guys, let's open up a can of worms with this mistake. Now, this is actually debated quite a bit because some people will actually try to have you believe that if you curl one arm at a time, your other arm is resting, thus gains are lost. Well, my friends, let's put this myth to bed with a little something I like to call common sense. Really? Resting? <laughs> guys, you still have to grip the dumbbell tight, keep the triceps flexed for full extension at the bottom of the movement, and not to mention, this is where the stretch is for the muscles we are trying to train. And if you think the fraction of a second between alternating arms is enough to interfere with the intensity of your reps, then there is only one conclusion I can come to, and that is you are hammer curling with baby weights. I mean, seriously, grab a pair of the heaviest dumbbells you can handle and start cranking out some reps. If there was too much rest due to alternating your arms, then in theory, you should be able to crush 30 to 40 reps easy with 50 to 60 pounds. Now, if you curl both arms at the same time, yes, it takes more core control. Yes, you will feel a bit quicker with heavier weights. However, if the goal is muscle gain, you want to be able to lift as much weight as possible and you'll be able to lift significantly more weight with more control performing this movement one arm at a time. But if you're circuit style training for fat loss, sure, double hammer curl all day long. But if your goal is muscle gain where overloading and heavy negatives play a crucial role in growth, then don't tell me that alternating single arm curls are not the best choice. Mistake number four, gripping the dumbbells in the middle of the handle. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, guys, the hammer curl is an isolation movement that's meant to target the brachialis and brachioradialis. So if you want to maximize the hammer curl and use as much weight as possible, don't grip it in the middle. At this point, you'll be wasting too much energy on grip strength when you should be focusing on curling the weight up. Instead, grab the dumbbell handle as high as you can, that way the dumbbell itself can rest on your hand. This will allow you to use heavier weights and will still benefit from holding the dumbbell to increase our grip strength and train our forearms. And mistake number five, performing the movement standing. So guys, this might not seem like a mistake to most of you, but it goes hand in hand with mistake number three. If the goal when building muscle is overloading, then you definitely want to curl one arm at a time. And if we can take it one step further and make it so the exercise doesn't require as much core control for stability, you'll be able to add another five to 10 pounds to your reps. So if you really want to take advantage of this exercise, you should be performing this movement seated. And to be clear, yes, I'm basically saying that performing the hammer curl standing is harder, but not harder for the biceps. It's harder on your core. So again, if you're circuit training for fat loss, do them standing in both arms at the same time. But for muscle gain, to get the most out of this exercise, you should be seated and alternating your reps. Now be sure to smash that like button if you're pumped to finally take full advantage of this movement. And if you want to incorporate it into your next biceps routine, I would first perform six to eight sets of a standard biceps curl, like a barbell curl or an incline dumbbell curl, and then finish the workout with six to eight sets of the seated alternating dumbbell hammer curl. And if you made it this far and are in need of a new muscle building program, try my cheat and recover workout. It will be one of the most intense programs you ever trained with, and it's guaranteed to help you push through a muscle building or strength building plateau. I'll put the link in my pinned comment below, or just wait for it in the end screen. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See ya. Yeah.